Okay, yeah, it's uh, Charlie ZL2 CTM again. Um, just basically finished implementing um, CW in the radio. So um, what we've done here, we've got a, a CW key um, coming in through here, and uh, it's using one of the uh, the interrupt pins. Uh, one of the digital pins has been set up as an interrupt, which we'll see in the uh, the software. So that pin is pulled high by an internal pull-up resistor, and um, when the Morse key uh, keys. It provides an earth and pulls that low, which is then sensed as an interrupt change. Um, on the display, this is in CW mode. So let me just uh, zoom up on that. Hopefully it'll stay relatively in focus. Um, and what I've done now, in CW mode, you'll see a little um, tuning mark appear superimposed over on top of the filter bandwidth. Uh, and what that allows me to do, if I just turn this transmitter on over here, it allows me to uh, align align the received frequency to give me what I like to hear as a, as a tone. So it's a, it's a tuning marker for me. Um, and then in software, uh, I've uh, got some offsets to ensure that when I go to key, um, I uh, transmit on the same frequency. So um, that's working well. Um, other than that, there are no other changes from a hardware perspective. Um, like I say, it's just the introduction of the Morse key and uh, a digital line or a line coming into the digital port. Um, everything else is done in software, which we'll have a look in there shortly. So uh, there's a, an oscillator in here, which is notionally set up for 1 kilohertz. So when that modulates the RF, um, it falls smack in the middle of the uh, crystal or part, the pass band of the crystal filter. Um, so that's why I selected notionally uh, one kilohertz for that internal software uh, sine wave. Okay, let's pause there and we'll have a look at the software um, and we'll go from there. Okay, we've got the reverse beacon network up here. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, key the transmitter and um, we'll send out a CQ and we'll see if we don't get picked up. Uh, let me just look at this, and uh, we'll come up to here, and let's just key the transmitter. Okay, let's have a look. see if we don't get a uh, report coming up. The uh, transmitter was set up for three and a half megs. So hopefully in the next, I might just pause here and if I need to I will um, trim the video. But uh, I've certainly been getting out all night, no problems at all. So come on Mr. Network, looks like busy tonight. Um, where are we, where are we, where are we? ZL2 CTM, there we go. So three and a half megs. Um, so that was spot on, so that's good. So uh, that's um, the reverse big network. So just a, a, so obviously getting out power, which is good, spot on frequency. And um, what we'll do now is we will just break and we'll have a look at um, the software. Okay, so just uh, looking at the software here, um, effectively what I did, and it's, it was pretty straightforward, um, was I created another object within the audio shield library for the Tensi. In this particular case, it's called the Audio Synth Waveform Sign, and I just gave it a generic name, an object name of CW Tone. Um, and then down in the assignments where you do the connections um, for the audio library, um, what I've done now under the transmit side is I've got that CW tone feeding into that same filter relay that we were using before. And if you recall, if you go to the website that looks at the Tensi audio design tool, um, that particular uh, mixer, which I've generically called here uh, relay, so it's an audio mixer 4, that 4 means you can have 4 inputs. 
So before I was only using two, I've now used the third. So I'm using zero, one, and in this particular case, I'm using uh, two, which is the third input, zero, one, and two. Um, and down in the setup, I've basically said for the third input, we'll say again the fourth input, so zero, one, two, three, I've made that gain zero. So basically, effectively, as I said here, I've turned off the fourth input into uh, what I call the filter relay. Um, so what that basically means is that on trans... All oh, right, okay, so that's probably uh, enough of that. Um, now, for the Morse code key, what I also did is I um, created another interrupt um, and I signed it to change. So whenever the key keys down or keys up, that's considered a change and it will run away and it will run this um, internet service routine Morse key pin change. It's the name of the internet service routine. And what that does, if we just go down and have a look at that, um, where's the ISRs? Uh, here goes the ISR there. So this is the, um, uh, yeah, sorry, just missed it. Interrupt routine for the CW Morse. So there it goes there, ISR Morse key pin change. What it does, so whenever that key, for example, goes down, it's considered a change. It runs away to here. It reads that digital um, line in for the Morse key. Checks it at zero, because at the moment it's held high with a pull-up resistor. So when the key down, it earths it. And if it does, it then turns on that, that tone oscillator we created. And we make an amplitude of 0 0.8. So I can go between 0, which is off, and 1. And I've just notionally given it um, 0 0.8. Um, conversely, if it's key up, that same internet service routine is run again. Um, and if it's doing the read and it doesn't get a zero, then else if the digital read is one, in other words, it's now keyed up, and then sets that amplitude to zero. So effectively, that's all, that, all that's done. And because it's sitting on an inter, inter, interrupt service routine, um, there's no delay because of the uh, the normal loop of the microcontroller. So it's, it's very reactive to um, the key down and key up. Um, and that's it. Um, and because you're in transmit mode, um, so turn on transmitter, we've basically enabled all of these um, filter gains. So for mode one and two, which is lower band, lower side band, upper side band, it just enables um, uh, the second input and it blanks the third, because we don't want to do CW. But however, in the CW mode, which is three, then we effectively turn off the microphone input and we enable um, that CW tone oscillator to pass through and then ultimately go through and modulate the RF and that is effectively it so um, not a lot of lines of code to effectively um, enable CW um, utilizing the the Tensi audio library so um, I'll probably leave it there for now um, and I'm just debating if I'm going to change tax now on the project because um, I've got a bit of an idea that I wouldn't mind building with this our summer season coming up down here in New Zealand uh, another tramping radio so um, I'm seriously thinking about um, putting this aside for now and um, having a think about uh, another tramping radio so I'm not quite sure if that's going to be a CW only maybe more than likely 20 meters because uh, that gives me a, a decent sized antenna um, or uh, or SSB but I think it's going to be a CW transmitter but uh, I need to put some thought to that one anyway so I'll leave it here thanks for watching um, any questions sing out but uh, so CW is up and running and as you can see there the reverse beacon network was picking that one up quite happily um, seems to be spot on frequency which is good and um, all in all a very interesting and enjoyable build certainly learnt a lot um, thanks for watching and um, uh, keep watching out and we'll have something else coming up soon. Cheers.